Aloha. Aloha. Welcome to today's Beef Satter series. Um, and hopefully more people will join. <laughs> right now we only have one, but um, yeah, we know it's, it's Saturday in a lot of places, so a lot of students are, a lot of people are probably busy and enjoying their weekend, but we are very thankful for, and we appreciate all our students who still come today, such as you, uh, Joya. Oh, Joya. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Nice. Um, but yeah, so hopefully more people will join. And if not, then it'll be recorded for everyone who missed, who's you know busy on the weekend or whatever. But I guess we can go ahead and get started. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let me share my screen. Okay. Aloha, everyone. Welcome to our Seasider series for today. Officially, today we are talking about church and the temple. So we'll be covering different information about uh, how the wards work and um, what the temple is like, especially with the COVID precautions going on right now. And yeah, it'll probably be a bit shorter because uh, it's Aloha Friday. And it's just not the most, I don't know, intense subject. So there's not a ton to discuss, but we are excited to talk about it with you guys. And as always, my name is Caden. My name is Carrie. Awesome. Let's go. All right. So we thought it would be good, you know, since today we're talking about church and the temple to, to talk about some of the history of the church in Lai. Because it's, uh, at least to me, it's kind of surprising when you first come, like how strong the church is here. Like it's like it's like a town in Utah or something where everyone or the vast majority of people are a member of the LDS church. So, uh, both in ancient and modern times, our town of Laie has been thought of as a sacred refuge. And if you have the opportunity to work at the PCC, then you will learn this in your orientation as well. They talk about how Laie is like seen as a sacred place. And at the PCC, they want to share that sacredness with the people who are coming to visit. Um, but so yeah, it was both both by the original inhabitants, the native Hawaiians in ancient times, as well as in modern times, the saints who came over as seen as a sacred place. And the LDS missionaries, they first arrived in Hawaii in 1850. Yeah, so yeah, uh, Christian, after they discovered Hawaii, uh, it was pretty shortly after the Christian missionaries started going teaching people. And they started going in like 1820, I think. And then not too long, much longer later, the LDS church arrived in 1850, like Kara said. And eventually, they had pretty good success in teaching the Hawaiian people. And in 1864, a call was made to establish a specific place in Hawaii for the LDS saints to gather. And this is what would eventually become our town of Laie. <laughs> and um, so they were they were searching for a place to to find of where the gathering place was going to be. <laughs> and um, eventually, Elder Francis A. Hammond uh, had a dream in which he was looking at some different places, and Brigham Young, the president of the church at the time, approved of this land of Laie, so that's how they decided to purchase the land of Laie. And it, we have, we found some old pictures, so here we have some old pictures of missionaries in Hawaii baptizing people, and then this is like the original mission home. Pretty blurry though, but I thought that was cool. And we have more old pictures. Okay, and then let's talk about the Hawaiian 
La Ye and the Church. So the Tuxco dedicated in 1950. And the first uh, dedicatory session of the temple then on Thanksgiving in 1919. Yes, so, uh, yeah, thank you, Karis. Yeah, after the missionaries arrived and they established this gathering place in Hawaii, it just continued to grow and it grew enough that they they uh, decided they, it would be a good place for a temple. And, and what Karis shared happened. 1915 and 1919. And then eventually uh, they, it, the town grew even more that they decided to make a college and another extension of Brigham Young University. And so this was first called the Church College of Hawaii, which is the original name for our school, BYU Hawaii. And it was established in 1955. And here you can see some old pictures. This is the original campus. And this is some old sign from when they were building the campus. And this is one of the original groups of students who attended the school. So I, I thought they were cool pictures. And then finally, this is another thing you'll learn about if you work at PCC, probably. <laughs> but, uh, so later, the PCC came to be also as part of the church and the church community. And so the way that the PCC came about was actually because on one of the main chapels in Laie that the members of the church used, uh, burned down. And they needed money to rebuild the chapel. And so the way that they raised the money to rebuild the chapel was to hold a hukula, which is like a, a luau or like a, a beach party, basically. And so they would hold this hukula and sell food to the tourists and perform um, dances for them, things like that. And it was really successful and helped them to rebuild the chapel. And because it was so successful, they kept doing it every year. And slowly it got bigger and bigger until it kind of turned into the official Polynesian Cultural Center in 1963. And so here's that chapel that burned down. And here's just some old pictures of the PCC that I thought were cool. Uh, yeah, the entrance, some, some student workers. And uh, I guess they got their one millionth visitor in 1979. <clears throat> All right, but so now we've talked a little bit about the, the church and its historical influence in Laie. But now we'll just talk about the modern, how if you come here, how the church works and you know how you find out what wards are in and things like that. So as you probably know, uh, BYU Hawaii is a is a church school from our church, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so most of our students are members of the church, uh, but there are some non-members here as well, and they are totally welcome to come. Yeah, yeah. It's great when they come. And every Sunday, we also go to the church and to partake the second meeting and also the Sunday school or like the Religious Society or Sunday school. Yeah, and Two chapels in it, 
so two wards can meet at the same time. And then, but there's also a lot of wards that meet in other buildings other than the state center as well. Some wards meet in the HGB, which is a, a classroom building uh, for business classes. It's right next to the state center. Um, and some wards also meet in the Aloha Center as well. I've I've been lucky enough to only have words in the state center, but a lot of words mean the HGBS. Yeah. But even you are not, you are, even you are not like doing the training in the state center, you are still building things. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, and also we have two main types of words. So the first type is about YSA word, which. And YSA stands for young single adult. Yeah. Less <laughs> if you're single, if you're not married. You'll go to a YSA word. Yeah. And but if you are married and if you are have a family, so you will go to the man, married student word. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so yeah, if you're YSA, you're not really gonna be interacting, at least in church, with married students or anything. If you're married, then yeah, you won't you won't ever be in the ward with like single students or anything. Um, and right now, because of COVID, um, masks are required to be worn the whole time in church. And they usually, they have like every other row that people can sit in. So like there'll be one row that people can sit in, so the next one is blocked off. No one can sit in. So the next one is open. And we don't know for next semester, you yeah. must be required to be required. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be lifted eventually sometime soon yeah but for now master still required all right so uh first we wanted to share a little bit about the ysa awards the young single adult awards there's there's not too much to share which is why we said today's session might be a little bit shorter um but like we said if you're in a ysa award your which ward you're in is going to be determined by um where you're living so depending on this depends on what room in your hallway or uh, where off campus you're living and you can find all the boundaries for what wards you'll be in at uh, wards.byuh.edu so that's a, if you get here and you're confused on where to go to church then you can look that up and see and it'll tell you where to meet and what time um, and then also if you have roommates who are who have been there before you, then it's good to just ask them, you know, where where is church and what time, and you can just go with them. And usually you will be assigned as the same board as your roommate or your unit. So usually you guys can go to church together, and you will not be alone, even you are Yeah. And so for the YSA wars, there's two uh, YSA stakes, and in total there's 18 different YSA wars. So there's quite a few different wars. Um, and of course, just as in any normal ward, you can expect to get a calling. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you could be elders quorum president. You could be. Society yeah. president. <laughs> or uh, you could be. I am a SAG coordinator, so I organize FAG activities. Yeah. Nice. So we will also have SAG activities every week. Usually every week, and it depends on the word. Some word, and they would do maybe every Monday or like every Wednesday. So usually, I don't know, like in our ward, they separate us into groups. So maybe about like ten people, you guys are gonna have a SHE activity group. Yeah. Activity group, and then so every week you guys can have fun together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, FHG stands for Family Home Evening, if anyone didn't know. And uh, yeah, it's just where you meet with, because if you're in a YSA ward, you're single, so you're not actually with your family. So instead you meet with a group of other students. And like Kara said, you do a different activity, whatever they have planned, basically. And I think it's something that's really fun. And I look forward to it every week. It's fun to get to know the other people in your ward and have, hang out and have fun with them. Yeah. Um, and uh, lastly, you know, just, just hope that you're lucky enough to get in 14th work, because that's the best one. <laughs> that's, that's my work. 
I think six word is the is is the best. I'm gonna switch my word. She's gonna switch it to fourteen. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, and then uh, we also talk about the married student awards. Uh, so the way that these are run is very similar to the YSA awards, except like we said, instead of having single students, it's all the married students with families. Uh -huh. So just like YSA awards, the which ward you're in is determined by you know what room in TVA you're living in or where off campus you're living. You can look at the same website for the boundaries again, wards.uiuh.edu. Um, and for the Y for the married student awards, there's just one state with six wards, so not quite as many um, married student awards as the YSA awards. Um, but yeah, and they're more like a normal family ward with with um, yeah full families, except except there's still not really any youth in the wards because uh, most pretty much all the students here are not old enough to have kids who are youth. Or just baby, <laughs> maybe some baby. primary. Um, but yeah, and neither of us are in a marriage student award, so we don't know too much about it. But Benet, who is over there, he he gave us some some information to share. So. Yeah, but yeah, it's about the same as what I say. Wow, as far as I know. Okay, and then endorsement. So before you, uh, or like when you apply to BYU Hawaii, you are required to do your endorsement. But once you came, once you like arrived here on campus, you must still do your endorsement each year. So it's required to re yeah, required to renew once each year to attend school. And also you will receive the endorsement from your bishop. So usually you will make a appointment like an interview with your bishop and then yeah he will do an interview with you and then see if you are if you still like qualified to have this endorsement and then usually um, the endorsement happens each winter semester and usually they will give you a few months to do that yeah yes. usually between like yeah, yeah and usually i start talking about it like march like march to yeah. april is when most people do it yeah, and then also like during the interview, the question revolves around like maybe honor code or like a church assistance or calling. So it is important to have your church assistant, church attendant. Yeah, I mean now it's just the order to get your endorsement. But also get closer to God and build your personal relationship with God. But yeah, even you are not like a church member, you are still required to go to the church and have the attendance so that you would have the emotion. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so yeah, like Kara said, of course you should go just because it's, you should go just to for yeah. spiritualness. But uh, also if you want to get your endorsement, then you also need to be pretty good. <laughs> they keep track of, of attendance every yeah. week. Um, so if you're missing like every single week the whole semester, then you might not get your endorsement. That would be bad news. That would be sad. Yeah. And also, like the attendance is not only come for the first hour, which is the second minute meeting. They also like do your second hours. Yeah. They will they will check like if you go to both hours like quite often. But uh -huh. if you only go to the second minute meeting, but you don't really go to the second hour, the bishop may ask you <laughs> or like. Yeah, it kind of depends on the bishop how, <laughs> how strict they are, but uh. Um, uh, what was I about to say? But yeah, so I mean, you know, obviously you don't have to have a hundred percent perfect attendance. But if yeah. the bishop, you know, thinks that you regularly attend, oh, mm -hmm. it's up to them to endorse. So, and I actually had a, a unit mate uh, last semester who never went to church like a single time. And then when it came time to get our endorsement, he, our bishop was like, okay, I'll maybe give it to you, but you need to like come for the next few weeks. But then our, my roommate still never came. And so then our, my bishop did, wouldn't give him the endorsement. He had to, my roommate had to meet with honor code and um, I don't really know what happened to him, but he might he might not go here. I don't know. He might've gotten kicked out or suspended. Wow. So the lesson we learn is we always have opportunity to repent, but we really need to repent. <laughs> <laughs> and if we return, then we, we will be good. But if yeah. we don't, then we, we have chance to return, but we still don't, then yeah. we do not.
and yeah, it's not something like the bishops want to give you your endorsement. So like, if you know, if you put in like any effort, really, then mm -hmm. they'll most likely Sorry, be willing to give it to you. Yeah. If they are, um, student. All right, and then lastly, we wanted to talk a little bit about the temple because being here in Laie, we are very blessed to have a temple right in our own town. So it's so close that you can even walk to it. And, you know, normally when COVID is not going on, you can like go visit it like as often as you want. Um, and luckily it's starting to open up more. And so there's still opportunities to visit and do temple work um, sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's something really cool. And it's one of the most noticeable things about the town when you get to campus, the way that the whole town is set up is that when you, when you drive down the road, all the roads kind of like center onto the temple, kind of the highest point in the town. So you mm -hmm. see it, um, and it's really cool. And it looks really cool in the day and at night. Yeah, and it is very pretty, just like the picture. And also, like currently, it opens for all the living ordinance. But if you want to do, I don't know about if not for living ordinance, they need to make a point. For what? For non-living. Yeah, for non-living ordinances, for for proxy non-living, um, they do have some of those, but they're more limited. So you have to look. So appointments have to be made for any ordinance to be done right now, and so you just have to look to see if there's availability for the non-living ordinances, and you still have to make an appointment for living ordinances as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also for some words, they also have the activity called like Word Temple Night. So you will go with your word member and together to go to the church and then do some audience, maybe baptism work. Yeah, for our church. So for our work. Yeah, yep, yeah, they'll just schedule a time where, yeah, like Kara said, everyone in the ward can go and do some sort of ordinance. Usually it's endowments or baptism. Yeah, but make sure you have your temple recommend. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. Otherwise, keep going. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's everything that we had prepared for today. Like we said, it was a little bit shorter. Um, but if anyone has any questions, as always, now the time to ask. They can be about anything we discussed today or anything that we yeah. didn't discuss today. All right, if there aren't any questions, um, oh, come on, we got a chat? Okay, yeah, so if there aren't any questions, then I guess we'll wrap up for today. Um, but this is our last Seasider series for this week in July, and it was really good, I thought. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it every day, and I hope that for anyone who came to any of our sessions, that it was you found it helpful, and, and it helps get you ready for coming to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. and Can we all give Kaden and Karis a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Our office is back. Thank you. 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 Thank we will do it again where we do it and have a session every day. We also have some other um, activities this month. We have a international showcase every Monday where we highlight a different student from a different country. And we also have talk story Fridays where students can come work on their English speaking and ask us any questions they have. And we also mentioned in one of our other Seasider series sessions, we're gonna be starting every Wednesday uh, what's called chat with ISS, and it's just going to be a time where advisors will be available on Zoom, and anyone who wants to can drop into the meeting and talk with an advisor, ask them any questions they want. Yeah, and also in the future, if there's any topics or anything you guys feel interested or want us to talk about more, you guys are feel free to mention your IHIS or like the message in. Grand 
see that UHS has orange just email as <laughs> Yep. And lastly, if you missed any, uh, there's recordings posted on our YouTube page, VOUHISS. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we said it a million times, but thank you so much to everyone who has participated this week and who attended today. And we really look forward to seeing you guys on campus soon, hopefully. And we just, yeah, we just love getting to help you guys and work with you guys. So that'll be everything for today. We'll see you next month. See ya. Right. Aloha. Mahalo and aloha.